I know you're gonna kill it, bro. Can you got me? Sinner go south, sinner go south. I'ma knock these ad libs out. Go love, Ghost House Studios. Yeah. We blowing clouds in the ghost house. We rolling loud in the ghost house. Break it down in the ghost house. Bring a pound to the ghost house. We blowing clouds in the ghost house. We rolling loud in the ghost house. Break it down in the ghost house. Bring a pound to the ghost house. We blowing clouds in the ghost house. We rolling loud in the ghost house. Break it down in the ghost house. Shit. Bring a pound to the ghost house. That's right, y'all. What's up? It's that time again. Welcome. Welcome back. Uh, you are in the ghost house. It's Wednesday night. Beautiful day here in Denver, Colorado today. Uh, Going to have a fun night on stream. Got a lot of fun things to talk about. And uh, as usual, looking forward to hearing all y'all's music and stuff. Uh, good to see you, AC. Good to see you, Random Eye. Welcome back. Good to see you guys. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, good day over here. Good day over here. Uh, finished up a bunch of uh, uh, work I had to do. Had to send a bunch of stems to a client. Uh, I had to send a bunch of files to other people. And uh, I had to start taking care of uh, all this shit with my car. So been dealing with that, dealing with the insurance and all that. Uh, a lot of fun. <laughs> a lot of fun. But yeah, all is good. All is good. Having a good day. Uh, and just very excited to get on the stream tonight. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, first things first, uh, you, you may have already noticed, there is a new emote. There is a new emote. And, spoiler alert, it's my dog Laika. The Laika emote. There she is. She's so beautiful. Um, yeah, uh, you know, if, if you just want a really good, loving emote, you're going to want to use the Laika emote. Uh, great dog. Great dog. Uh, my dog Laika. This picture was taken a couple of years ago. She's uh, 11 years old now. Cute, cute dog. Uh, the best. And uh, been been uh, uh, she's been in my custody for quite a long time now. For pretty much as long as she's been alive. So, uh, yeah, I had another emote slot. I was looking for something to fill. And then I was like, obviously, obviously get the dog on there. She is an old girl, but she's doing great. She's in great health. Uh, she's got lots of energy, feeling good, looking good. So yeah, we got a like it emote now. Uh, feel free to use it, and uh, yeah, that's a fun one. I, that's that's something I meant to do <laughs> a long time ago, and uh, and kind of kind of spaced on it, and and now we got it going. So my dog immortalized on Twitch. Uh, you know, I'm sure she's got a great many years left in her, but she won't be here forever. And uh, she's so cute. This is my favorite picture of her. It's uh it's actually on the studio website. You can find it. It's kind of hidden on there if you click around. But, uh, yeah, dogs are the best, and my dog specifically is the best dog. She rules. She is named after the first dog in space. Yes, not many people know that. It's so weird. Uh, a lot of people don't know that story. I actually have a, a, a graphic novel about uh, Laika going into space. It's very sad. I don't know if you know the whole story with that. The Russians sent a dog into space, and uh, they told the world that she... Uh, you know, she 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 survived up there for for weeks until she ran out of oxygen. But the truth is, she burned up immediately. <laughs> she didn't even really make it up there. The uh, they didn't really uh, heat proof it properly. She overheated. She panicked, and uh, yeah, she was a dog hero, and she died. Uh, very sad story. Very sad uh, graphic novel. I'd recommend it. Uh, you know, the Russians back in the uh, back in the space race days, doing some wild stuff out there. But yeah, like of the dog, uh, my pal, my pal in life, my best friend. So uh, yeah, she is now an emote, so uh, <laughs> much better than the emote we introduced yesterday. And again, she got approved immediately. I really don't know what it is because they're supposed to hand approve your emotes, but some of them just get approved immediately. And thankfully, like it got approved immediately, did not have to wait. So enjoy. Still got a couple in the queue, got two new animated ones in the queue, and uh and one other one, so we'll see if any of those other ones get on soon. But yeah, this is going to be the you know the last stream this week, uh, uh, you know, and we will. I'm going to try to be back on Monday next week. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. 
Do I look closer? Um, I might have knocked it. I have to like go over there and turn it on every day. And I might have knocked it a little bit. Maybe I'm much closer. Maybe I'm not. I don't know. To me, it doesn't look that much different. I look at like where the top lights are and where the desk is. It looks like maybe it got zoomed in a little bit though. I, I do see it. So yeah, possible. I didn't mean to do it. That's for sure. But yeah, I have to go over and kind of uh, flick the DSLR when I go to start streaming. And uh, I'm always nervous. I'm going to move it. So I might have I moved might have moved something a little bit. But yeah. Um so yeah, we'll uh we got a couple of things I want to go over before we start getting into songs this evening. Um I see we already got one from AC in there. AC's very eager to go. Uh you love to see it. Uh but yeah, a couple of things I want to talk about. Um uh, just first off, I want to say thank you to everyone who's hanging out yesterday. Thank you to everyone who subbed. We had a couple subs yesterday. We had Wes subbed, Melancholy subbed. Appreciate you guys. Everyone who's gifted subs, uh, AC has gifted a sub, so thank you for that. Uh, Beanie, Zale, a couple of people who have gifted subs. Um, also want to shout out uh, the, the other streamers who have been uh, dipping in here. Uh, I'm definitely going to be, you know, I'm trying to follow y'all and check y'all out. Uh, Pink Hair Producer, Momo as Nadal, Kind of Good Gaming. I think Melancholy said he streamed also. Uh, yeah, if you if you guys stream, uh, let me know. You know, if you go on once in a while or you go on regularly, let me know. I'll definitely uh, want to follow you and, and hopefully uh, click on you at some point. So uh, yeah, let's uh, let's start moving the stream forward here. Did I tap it? Did it go? I can't tell if it went. Um, let's start moving the stream forward, and uh, we got a couple of things I want to talk about here. So first off, big, big news in the music world. Uh, you heard it. You, you probably heard it already. Uh, BTS uh, going on hiatus, uh, going to work on solo projects. This is this is like the Beatles breaking up, you guys. This is a big deal. Well, to a lot of people it is. Um, yeah, they, they at first they said they were going on hiatus, and then they said, we're not going on hiatus. We changed our mind, uh, but we're not going to be playing together as a band and we're gonna whatever you know i don't really follow this stuff but uh it's a big story you know when i was clicking around music news i was just seeing this headline over and over and over again bts is huge uh i don't know what their their numbers are their sales or whatever but huge huge band k-pop very very big the last couple years so uh this is this is big news to a lot of people it may not be to you or i here's uh bts at the white house what were they doing there no one knows uh so you know r.i.p and maybe they'll be back they, they say they're not disbanding, they're just living apart for a while. But, you know, being in a band, being in a group, uh, maybe it's a little different if you're in a, a K-pop super group. But like being in a relationship with a bunch of people, and uh, it can be stressful even even when times are good. So who knows what happened there, but BTS on hiatus. Uh, okay. Uh, and next we have a little economic, uh, a little, little bit of economic uh, discussion here. How inflation and the pandemic are feeding the attention recession. If social media if social media wasn't enough to burn out everyone's attention spans, inflation and the aftermath of the pandemic are just feeding the fire. So um, this is uh, kind of a, a short but meandering article. But basically it's saying that because of uh, where the economy is going, inflation is insane and uh, people are still coming off of the pandemic, which changed everything. Um, we're going to be seeing less of this. We're going to be seeing less eating out, less going out, less going to concerts. And, uh, but meanwhile, more people are saying that they're going to be retaining their streaming services and all the stuff they pay for at their home. Uh, people are more willing to cut concerts and, and eating out, dining out, going out, uh, you know, going out at night out of their life than they are to, uh, get rid of their streaming stuff. So, uh, you know, I mean, still there are plenty of people who say they would. But, uh, you know, people are people are going to be kind of uh, chilling for a while. The economy is not going in a good direction. We got a lot of stuff on the horizon that's going to be a little rough. So uh, everyone get ready for that. And I hope you all do all right through all this. Uh, definitely here in America, maybe throughout the world. It, it, it's it's it looks like it's going to get a little rough. It looks like things are, are going to be uh, pretty bad for a while. So, uh, you know, people are saying they're going to be going to less concerts. Who knows? I mean, I go to concerts and they're always packed. So maybe, maybe not. Are we all turning into introverts? Yeah, maybe. Maybe. I mean, we're all, you know, they're, they're, they're pushing us toward this metaverse. We're all going to be living our entire lives in a computer. We're, we're basically signing up for the Matrix. It's all happening. So, you know, good to, good to kind of keep an eye on the trends here. 
But uh, yeah, inflation and the aftermath of the pandemic uh, are going to be uh, keeping us all cooped up in our homes, uh, downloading torrents and stuff. So <laughs> get ready for that. Uh, okay. Yeah. Just a couple of brief little things here. Here's another one. Here's another one. We've seen stories like this before. YouTuber ends Metroid Prime Music's covers after Nintendo's lawyers call. This is an interesting story. So you keep seeing Nintendo shutting down these uh, YouTube accounts that are reposting music from their games and stuff like that. And uh, nobody likes it. Nobody likes it. It's not like you can go to Best Buy and buy the Donkey Kong Country soundtrack. You know, it's not like, you know, where else are you getting these things, really? Does Nintendo have a streaming music service? Who knows? I don't think Nintendo puts stuff on Spotify, you know? So there are all these channels they shut down. But this one's a little different because this wasn't just reposting the music. This was a person posting their original interpretations of uh, music from Metroid Prime. Okay? And so there's a, a legal distinction there. It's not the same thing as just posting music. There is a legal, uh, what's the word? There is a, a niche in the law that allows for covers of music. No one can stop you from making a cover of their song. If you want to cover a song, the artist can't say, no, you can't cover that song. What they have in the law is this thing called a compulsory license, which means you have to pay the artist to use their song, but it's compulsory, which means they can't say no. Okay? So this, uh, this, this YouTuber, uh, which was a small YouTuber, less than 7,000 subscribers, this isn't like a huge channel. I mean, I'm sure probably these these videos might have had like 100,000 views or whatever. Who knows how big the, the channel actually was. It's gone now. I can't click it and see it. But uh, he, uh, he was making covers of the music from Metroid Prime, which is very cool music. I remember really liking that game when I was growing up. And, uh, you know, very uh, ambient, uh, 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 what's the word, environmental kind of music. And uh, they sent him a cease and desist. Nintendo sent him a letter saying, hey, we own this and you need to take it down. And uh, they said, uh, I mean, this is what the guy says. He says, I'm really disappointed in Nintendo that they would force me to take down these videos because they want compulsory licenses. Now, again, a compulsory license is compulsory by law. You, you cannot deny somebody a compulsory license. The whole point is you're supposed to be able to say, hey, you owe us this amount of money. And that's how it's settled legally. Okay. Um, so th th it's by the law. And again, the law as it's written doesn't always work like this in the real world. You know, this is all interpreted by people. This is all whatever people can get away with, whatever their lawyers can present. So just because the law says something doesn't mean that's always how it works in practice. And so, you know, this person doesn't want to fight Nintendo. Uh, but again, he's just expressing his frustration, as we've often seen with Nintendo kind of chasing all this copyright stuff. And they, they really have seemed to be pissing a lot of their fans off. Why can't Nintendo go down this route, he says? Why can't Nintendo do this like everyone else? Basically meaning, he, he, he's, saying, he's saying, why don't you just monetize my video? I would rather keep them up and you have the money than just take them down. So he's saying, why can't you just do what everyone else does, which is put a copyright claim on the video and monetize it? You, you, you're legal, you know, you can legally do that. That's basically, you know, I don't know if there's a distinction there, but that's basically the compulsory license right there is, you know, we, we monetize your music. I think that's what that, that is on YouTube. So why does my recreational cover have to be removed when the song it's based off has never seen any sort of official soundtrack release? You can't even buy the original anywhere. It's obvious there's a strong market demand for Nintendo to release this music outside the game it was written for. Nintendo can easily capitalize on this market, but they refuse to do so. The whole situation has left a really bad taste in my mouth, and once I'm finished editing these Metroid videos that are currently in the pipeline, I am done. So, uh, yeah, Nintendo seems to be just kind of slowly chasing their fans off of YouTube. It's, it's a little bizarre what they're doing, but this one is a weird one because, again, the law wouldn't really seem to be on their side. Is it wrong for Nintendo to protect their intellectual property? Not necessarily. I mean, there's, uh, like I said, this one's a tricky one just because you, you're, you're, there's a provision in the law that you can make a cover. You know, the, what he's doing isn't illegal. And so they, it's not really, it doesn't seem, you know, this is kind of, this might be kind of murky, a murky area legally because it's on YouTube. Um, you know, this, this, it's not like you printed a CD, you know, when I was learning this shit in school, when they were talking about compulsory licenses, they're like, well, if you print 5,000 CDs with a cover song on it, you have to pay the artist this amount of money. There's no such thing as CDs anyway, you're not printing anything. It's, it's streaming. 
So you think that if uh, Nintendo mo- if Nintendo put the claim on the YouTube channel and said, hey, we're getting the money from this, that that's essentially the equivalent of getting the compulsory license paid. So I don't I don't I don't I don't understand, you know, why they would send a cease and desist rather than just uh, just doing that, because that seems to be the actual remedy under you know what it should be legally under the law. It's uh, bizarre. But yeah, I mean, Nintendo, there are certainly things Nintendo can do to protect their intellectual property that makes some kind of sense. You know, if someone's posting a soundtrack from a current game that's available for sale, they could probably defend that. And I don't think most people, you know, would find that hard to understand. Um, People using their characters for fan games and stuff is kind of a murky area. You know, they... You can you can understand why they go after it, but sometimes it just feels bad when someone's doing good work. But you know, I always think that uh, if you're if you're like a game programmer and you're using like Mario sprites or something, you know, why are you even doing that, right? Like, why why are you going to use the Mario sprites and make a Mario game when you could just make your own game? You know, I, I don't know. I mean, I understand different levels of this. I do. But, uh, yeah, Nintendo, I mean, you're just constantly seeing Nintendo do stuff like this. It seems to, like, take a lot of goodwill uh, away. But, you know, they, they, they're they in a position to do that because it's not like you could go anywhere else for Mario, Zelda, Metroid. Like, they, they are the monopoly on those things. And, you know, I'm a Nintendo nerd for sure. Like, I, I have a Switch. I don't really have other systems. I don't play a lot of games now, but I did play the new Mario, played the new Zelda. And, uh, you know, I like stuff like that. And you can't get it anywhere else. You know, you can certainly uh, make the argument that there are other games out there that are, you know, do the same thing or are better or whatever, but it's it's not the same. If you grew up with that stuff, you have an attachment to the characters. So you could see why they would defend, like, the characters. But defending the, you know, Metroid Prime can, came out in 2001, so telling people now to take off covers of it 20 years later is bizarre. What's up? I am Zykru. Zykru, uh, welcome to the channel. Uh, good to see you here tonight. Uh, we're just going over a little bit of uh, links, uh, news in the music world right now, as we often do to start off the streams. But we will be getting into viewer feedback in a little bit. If you have a song to submit, we'll listen to it on stream. Uh, please do uh, use the feedback command and uh, and put it in the Discord. And uh, welcome. It's a dumb waste of time for Nintendo to even do this for something so smart. That's really what it seems, right? Like, it seems like all it does is just kind of alienate people who are, like, kind of the biggest fans. It's so weird. What's up, Rob? <laughs> you found my dog. That's Laika. Laika's on here. What's up, Elstrom? Everyone's back. Good to see y'all. Ah, I love seeing uh, all y'all pop in the channel early on. For a couple of weeks, I was getting on here just doing these kind of music news roundups to nobody, which was still fun. Was still fun. But, uh, yeah, I, I just like starting off the stream, just going through some, uh, you know, some links that I find, whatever. So, yeah, Nintendo doing it again, pissing off uh, people who are making covers of their old music. Absolutely ridiculous. So stupid, infuriating, unbelievably pathetic, unbelievably silly. People hate it so much. But here's the thing. These fans aren't going anywhere. They're going to be posting on Nintendo Life tomorrow and they're going to buy the new whatever. You know, that's that's kind of why they could do stuff like this. These fans aren't going anywhere. They're the most diehard fans. It's kind of like what I was saying, you know. It, if, if if you want this stuff, you can't go anywhere else. You can't be like, Nintendo, this is the last straw. I'm going to go play Mario somewhere else. It just doesn't happen. So, yeah, frustrating for sure. It, it seems uh, counterproductive. And Nintendo does a lot of weird, annoying stuff that you, you don't really understand. But perhaps they have a reason for it. Perhaps they have a reason. Uh, next thing, uh, you know, we're doing, uh, emotes in here. So I just found on Twitter, this is someone, uh, rating the ghost emojis. Uh, we might have some new ghost emojis at a certain point. There are already certain emotes that I'm like, these could probably get cut. I've seen a couple of people use lit, but I think it's pretty bad. <laughs> and, uh, crunch maybe can, we'll bring it back like special times only, you know, it'll be like the, uh, the McRib or whatever. But, uh, yeah, so this, uh, I, I don't know who this person actually is on here, but uh, ranking the ghost emojis, you know, if you're using the ghost emoji, they're different between all, all these different phones. We are in the ghost house, so uh, we do want to find the best ghost. Now, I'm very partial to my ghost, the great green ghost, uh, great design on that, but let's check out some of these other emojis. So this is the one she likes the best, uh, great readability, spooky, cute, conveys an impressive amount of ennui. Hmm. Uh, I do like this ghost. It's a just very elegant, classic ghost. Um, okay. And then, so that was best. Uh, bold decision-making tier. Uh, this, I guess, I don't know where you would encounter this ghost emoji in the wild, but breaks the mold. Very scary. 
Uh, functional tier, good and spooky. This is from Messenger or LG phones. We like all this. You drop some uh, some impron. Oh, you saw some. <laughs> you saw mo- something Monofono was working on. Hell yeah, exciting new music. Um. So yeah, functional kind of ghosts, and then we get to uh, HTC. Have you all ever seen this? I used to have an HTC phone a very very long time ago. It was not great. Uh, I don't recall the ghost looking like this, but that's about right. Everything was a little jank on the HTC phone. Uh, one revision away from the bottom, but still appealing. Zero spookiness. Uh, the Twitter ghost emoji, good concept, poor execution. I don't really get why the concept's good on here. I do see why the execution's poor. Not a fan of this one. Uh, and then here we go. Cowardly social media executive tier. We've received a number of complaints about the ghost emoji being too scary. Could you make it a bit more fun? <laughs> and these are all the ones that you're seeing day to day the apple the google yeah i really do not like the google one uh this is not bad what is a soft bank what is that does anyone know what this is is this a a service or a brand i love that actually that's kind of great let's get a screenshot of that save that's a great ghost how did this end up in the last tier here that's that that might be number one that's bizarre um what else yeah microsoft not that impressive samsung pretty dull the WhatsApp one is not bad. That's not bad. Uh, and the rest of these, not very... Yeah, Facebook, probably the worst of these here. This is so bad. What's up, Agong? Welcome. Good to see you again. Yeah, we're looking at different ghost emojis. Uh, we have two more little things we'll talk about before we start getting into music. How's the Discord look in? We just got one track in there. Guys, get more tracks in the Discord. Get some tracks in the Discord. Uh, we're going to start... Uh, we're going to start looking at uh, music in a, in a couple minutes here, in just a few minutes. Only got a couple little things to talk about. Uh, it has been a little while since you last hopped on. Yeah, th- uh, things are good here. Things are good. Just rocking and rolling here. Um, yeah, I had a, uh, had a fun stream last night. I had a very long, uh, drawn-out uh, moment of uh, technical difficulties. <laughs> but uh, it was fun nonetheless fun nonetheless yeah everybody drop songs in the discord you guys i want to hear your music uh we are we are sharing music here uh we're having a good time so uh do feel free to share maybe i'll start sharing uh, some old songs or something i have a whole folder with all uh all old songs from bands i was in and stuff i've made myself and a lot of it is very bad like very very bad really really not good but you know, it means something to me. <laughs> it's the back in the day kind of stuff. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, I much prefer uh, what y'all are doing. But um, yeah, so there's some ghost emojis there. Uh, this is the thing we started off there. We had a little cold open for the stream today. We started it off with this. I don't know, just saw this the other day. I thought it was, or it's earlier. I thought it was funny. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, no, no, no. It's a little auto tune, and this dude sounds exactly like The Weeknd. That's uh, <laughs> this has to be from 1994 or something, 1992. Uh, yeah. Okay, let's listen back to this. Okay, because you just recorded what you were singing into the mic. Yeah, and we can view this. So, along with the not the MIDI capabilities of a professional sequencer, it also gives you. The ability to manipulate and, and there see you are. Uh-huh. digital audio. So let's listen to that back. And you can see the bouncing ball, just like the other program, gives you an idea where the bars and beats are. And there you are. I like that bouncing ball. How come we don't get that anymore? That's fun. That's fun. This program is called Studio Vision. It didn't seem to make it. A lot of DAWs these days, but you don't see many Studio Vision users. Do I only listen to viewer submitted original content on stream? Um, kind of, uh, not necessarily, but there's been enough of it lately that, um, we have been keeping the stream pretty busy with that. Uh, for a while when the stream was kind of uh chiller, I was asking people to just show me songs they liked, stuff that they were into listening to. And, uh, yeah, so maybe we can do some of that if it stays a little quiet when we got a couple songs in the queue, but, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's been, uh, it's been moving along enough in here that I've been pretty, uh, pretty uh occupied keeping uh an ear on everything everyone's submitting all all their songs so and i i i really enjoy that i do really enjoy that uh so that's that's 
probably what I prefer to be doing, but uh, we're going to be expanding what we do on stream for sure. Like, uh, we're going to be doing more. Um, for a long time, I've been thinking about how to build up uh, what I'm doing on, on Twitch here, and I, I have a lot of ideas. We're going to see what makes sense to put into practice. You've been uh, doing more DMB? Hell yeah. Yeah, the energy in DMB is so good. It just feels so good. And another thing that's good about it is you could kind of just listen to it nonstop forever. Like, it's, an, it's a genre where... If I'm working for a song, I don't mind listening to that song. If I'm working on a song, I don't mind listening to that song for like two hours, you know, nonstop. You could just leave it looping while you do stuff. Yeah, it feels great. That's cool. Uh, yeah, is that what you got uh, in the in the dis Discord here? Oh, excited to hear it. Excited to hear it. Yeah, big fan of DMB. So yeah, that's uh you know <laughs> some some audio software from way back in the day. I remember when computers looked like this for sure, when I was a youngin. This is a Macintosh LLC or something, I, I, Macintosh Two C or whatever. I forget what they were actually called. Something like that. The floppy drive, big boxy monitor. It was a different world. It was a different world. You guys look. You'll never know the satisfaction of clicking a mouse that looks like this. Oh, that is horrible. It looks like you cut a Super Nintendo controller in half. Uh, yeah, this was this was cutting edge technology for a while. Oh, oh, oh. And you're recording oh, right onto the hard drive here. That's correct. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you know, maybe that's calling out for a remix there. This channel is pretty fun. This audio hurts. It's all like audio engineering memes and stuff. You know. <laughs> Uh, if, if, if this kind of stuff uh, gets you going, if this kind of stuff uh, does it for you, good channel, good Instagram to follow. <laughs> um, yeah, 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 basically, uh, whoops. So you've decided to become isolated and weird audio and the audio engineers, um, manual. Fun stuff. Uh, okay, just one or two more things to look at before we start uh, playing some songs in here. And uh, once again, welcome all y'all. Good to have you back. New tech makes it easier for folk to discover their talents. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, every time there's a new uh, platform that comes out and, and people rise to the top on it, some people just uh, take to certain platforms, certain technologies. Yeah. Uh, so here we go. Novacore warns musicians about shady promotion services. Uh, this is, I think this is a press release just trying to get this company's name out there. But uh, basically they're saying, uh, this is a music distribution company. They're saying to watch out for some of these, uh, some of these things that say they'll get you on playlists or whatever. Um, uh, they're charging you a fee to pitch your music to popular playlist curators on Spotify, SoundCloud, whatever. Uh, paying to be featured on playlists is not allowed by the streaming platforms. Uh, the the biggest red flag is the agency offering a guarantee to get the musician song featured on a playlist. Yeah, uh, these agencies and promoters don't have a way of providing that guarantee. Uh, you know, watch out for these things. Even if they do get you some plays or something, they're not always the, you know, a lot of times it's very easy to see through. You know, you can see through. Um, the, when, when someone has numbers that are a little fluffed up, it's, it's often not very hard to see through it, you know? So don't, don't do it. There, there are times when it makes sense to buy a couple of plays or something, but probably, probably not something you want to be doing too often. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, they're just saying to be careful of these things, whatever. Uh, I'm sure we all already know some of these are kind of scammy or, or not really worth the money. And uh, last thing before we start playing some music, and uh, yeah, fun little roundup today. I just want to show you all this video. Maybe some of y'all have seen this because this was, uh, you know, it has a couple million views. It's from a couple years ago. But uh, if you guys know Victor Wooten, bass player, genius bass player, uh, really, really brilliant musician, very charming musician, very natural musician, started playing bass when he was a little child. He was born into a family of musicians and and when he was born, his, his his siblings were like, good, we needed a bass player, kind of, is how he tells it. So uh, this dude is really amazing at clinics and, and talks. You know, I don't know if you guys have ever attended a clinic, a, like a musician's clinic. Um, 
that might be a fun thing to look at later on stream too. some different clinics. Uh, if, if you haven't gone, I've been to a, a few. Um, they're pretty fun. If you're an instrumentalist or even if you just really like a certain instrument or, or you want to see something fun or impressive, just look up if there's anything, uh, anything happening, any music clinics happening. Sometimes there are music stores or at, uh, you know, colleges, musicians, institutes or whatever kind of places. But, uh, like I went to see, uh, the drummer from the bad plus, uh, did a clinic at a drum shop near here and it was great. You know, basically they'll just kind of, uh, they'll, they'll play a little bit of the instrument. They'll kind of show off a little bit, have some fun. You know, it'll be someone who's professional and competent and, and fluid in their instrument. Uh, so they'll play a little bit and then they'll just kind of talk and share a little bit about their life and career and answer some questions. Pretty fun thing to do. And I, I don't think I knew that with that, they were really something that existed for a long time. It's not like a common thing that's going on all the time. But again, if you have, if you have good music stores near you, they might do something like this. If you have, uh, you know, a college with a music program or, or, you know, any sort of music -y institutions, they might, they might do clinics. So, uh, I've seen Victor Wooten play up close, uh, a couple times, uh, one time giving a clinic at, uh, a NAM show, one of the, uh, trade shows for music gear. And he's just very charming and enchanting to watch play. He's insanely good at bass, just super, super good. And, uh, he's just very gifted at talking. He's written a couple of books, which are actually pretty good. Uh, just really lives and breathes music, just really understands the spirit of music, uh, very well. Uh, he has, uh, <laughs> I like this quote on the YouTube before we play it. Uh, I met Victor 20 years ago. After asking him about some of his techniques, he told me, don't try to figure out what I do. Try to figure out what you do. He's that kind of guy. You know, he's just fucking mystical. So uh, this video is called Every Basis Needs to Hear This. Um, it's uh, it's a fun watch. It's a two minute video. So I figured we play it uh, right before we get the stream started. Let's all get in a good vibe. Let's get in a good mood. Let's get inspired. Uh, this sort of stuff is inspiring to me, you know, and he has, he has all sorts of videos and moments. Uh, this is, you know, it's, it's chill. I mean, I'm not, I'm not gonna say, you know, I don't know if it's going to blow your mind or nothing, but it's just chill. And I was trying to talk the other day on the stream about how hard it is to get the right level of simplicity in your melodies. And this kind of speaks to that. So let's check out this video real quick and then we'll get into, uh, into music submissions. So hell yeah. Thank you guys for being here. Uh, gonna have a fun stream tonight. I'm really looking forward to it. I've been having good streams all week. So, uh, yeah, let's check out this video and then we'll switch it over. Listen to the record. Face don't ever change. So who would sit here for an hour and do this? Would look back and <laughs> 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 that ain't in the song, right? <laughs> right? Yeah, you know, and you know, if I did by the third time you're gone, right? <laughs> by the third time you quit listening to me and you're in it. That's the power of playing simple, right? And repetitive, because it doesn't take long for people to get it. Right? If I start going... You hear how quiet you are now? <laughs> because you're listening. Yeah. Listening is cool. But I want... Maya Angelou said, people won't remember what you said, they won't remember what you did, they'll remember how you made them feel. Yeah. Music is no different. If I can catch you... You like that quote? Can you hear all this okay? Can you hear all this okay? It's, it's me. He's maybe a little quiet. It's a loud environment. Maya Angelou quote, People won't remember what you say, what you did. They'll remember how you made them feel. Pretty good one, especially with music. You or hit you, grab you by feeling, right? I got you. Then I can make you listen. I can pull you to where the other cool stuff is. But feeling is where it's at because you're born with feeling. You'll die with feeling. Feeling doesn't have to be learned. Feeling is another universal language like love, hate, jealousy. Nobody hasn't learned that. That's not cultural dependent. We feel everywhere all the time. So when you can reach someone with feeling, you can play less techniques, right? And you end up playing more music. That's why B.B. King, that's why, if B.B. King was in a guitar competition by today's standard, he wouldn't even place, right? If, how much theory you know, what chords, 
B.B. King has played the same five notes for 60 years, 70 years, right? But your grandparents and your grandkids will all know B.B. King's name. Your mom and your kids won't know. We just lost last Easter, Alan Holsworth. Amazing, but your mom don't know who Alan Holsworth is. And neither will your kids, but everyone will know B.B. King. Figure out why, and then play like that, right? You get it right away. Uh, fun, fun video there that has, it has the vibe of like a really good clinic. That's what a, a good clinic is. You know, musicians sitting there with their instrument and playing things, showing you things, talking about, uh, what, what, you know, how they think that they feel has kind of got them able to do what they do. You know, I, I feel like that's it. Everyone who's, uh, doing something unique. I think they know what they're doing. I think they, they understand what it is that sets them apart from, from other people who are trying or who who aren't as good, whatever. And, uh, you know, so I feel like they try to articulate, <laughs> articulate that in a, uh, in a tactful way, uh, and an engaging way. Uh, so yeah, cool video, you know, and it, it really is, you find that right, simple part that gives you the right vibe and it's, it's better than any technique, any flashy, whatever, you know, uh, we all like that stuff too, for sure. It's fun. But, uh, yeah, kind of a quaint point, you know, because, uh, I mean, even this, which was just from a couple of years ago, I mean, music's so much about sound design now and about the right nuances and ear candy and all this stuff. So uh, I don't know, maybe simplicity is losing its place, but, you know, definitely the the big songs seem to be simpler usually, right? They usually do. Anyway, I really like that video. Uh, Victor Wooden has a lot of really cool videos like that. Uh, you know, he's, he's just very, uh, very good at explaining the, the magic of music and, uh, sharing his passion of music. Uh, very talented, uh, plays in, uh, I mean, he's played with a lot of people, I'm sure, but, uh, he, he's, he's pretty well known for playing in a bluegrass band, which is weird. A uh, very, uh, progressive bluegrass band called Bella Fleck or, you know, led by Bella Fleck. Music, especially EDM, is getting pretty complicated. Yeah, and I enjoy it. I I enjoy it. It's 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 almost because it's kind of like what it's saying. It's it's almost a, a short term gratification thing versus something that can get stuck in my head. You know, because in the moment it's like wow, you know, and it's giving me a feeling, but it's not like I'm leaving. You know, uh, leaving the rave, walking around humming some of that, some of that stuff. You know. It, 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 you you want to put it on for a specific moment for a specific vibe and he's more of like a, how do i how do i uh find the the one baseline that burrows into your head for the rest of your life kind of dude you know yeah no i don't think it's a bad thing but it, yeah it's it's like a different it's a different uh approach it's a, you know it's different genres different different uses uh and i definitely like uh music with some some uh, legitimate sound design and uh, hope to hear some tonight yeah so uh what's up everybody hope y'all are good uh once again we only got two songs in the discord right now so i'll say if you're hanging out if you're lurking uh if you're a music maker and you have songs you want to share please uh post them in the discord use the feedback command get them in there last channel in the discord feedback submissions uh we will listen to your music on stream my name is rich uh, this is my studio. It's a commercial recording studio in Denver, Colorado. And uh, uh, we listen to your music here in a really nice environment. Uh, happy to offer specific feedback uh, if there's something in particular you want to know about. If uh, you're not sure about something with your mix or whatever, uh, feel free to to, to get, uh, bring that to my attention. And I'll, I'll, I'll listen and I'll, I'll let you know what I think. Uh, but yeah, just, uh, been in here listening and enjoying, having a really good time. Uh, really been, I say it every stream, but just, uh, super surprised and, and humbled by, uh, the quality of the submissions that we get here. So I, I really appreciate y'all hanging out and sharing what you do because, uh, there's so much talent and that's, it's really why I'm on here. You know, I want to get the studio out there. I want to meet y'all. Uh, there's a whole new generation of insanely talented producers and music makers out there, and I'm I'm trying to make those connections, you know. So appreciate y'all being here, and definitely feel free to talk to each other and and f collaborate, and uh, you know, I I love this stream, I really do. It's been a lot of fun uh, having people coming through and and sharing. It's it's really brought it to life. How long did it take to build the studio? Good question. It took about three years to build the studio. Uh, the studio was completed. 
it, it, it was completed around 2016. It was, it was around the end of the year, 2016, that I was really able to open up here. So I've been open, yeah, almost six years now. Um, took, uh, yeah, took a long time to build. I was working uh, with a lot of people on this. Uh, I, my architect who designed this place uh, does nothing but design recording studios. Uh, his name is Wes Show. I need to get a West command <laughs> just so I can link his website because I definitely mentioned him a bunch. But uh, West Show designed this place. Uh, I can bring up his website for a second on here. I'll show you some of the other studios he's done. Um, this dude is amazing. Uh, master acoustician. So, uh, yeah, West Show Design Group. Uh, so you can see he has other studios. Um, if I don't know if you've seen pictures of like what the whole studio looks like here. I have him on my website. But he has kind of a a similar uh you know he's been like kind of refining the way he does his control rooms for his whole career and he's been de uh, designing and building studios for 30 or 40 years so uh so it it's like they're all kind of a similar design but they just kind it just kind of gets better and better the way he does it. and he has some really huge and impressive studios i mean my place is not nearly as big as uh, any of these but uh they have a lot of the same features you know you could kind of see like this desk here like i got the same desk, more or less, you know, he, he does it a specific way. And, uh, and it's, it's just a formula for making the room sound incredibly accurate. The, the, the walls are at certain angles. It's built out a certain way that, uh, anywhere you stand in the room, it's very accurate. That's kind of the idea. So these are some of the nicer, bigger studios, uh, he's built. Uh, there are a lot of them, uh, some big consoles, uh, all over the world, all over the world, all over America, uh, all different countries. Um, very interesting fellow. He was like an old hippie, hitchhiked across the country, was an audio engineer in North Carolina. He told me, uh, he, 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 he thought he was like so attuned to how the sound of the room was making his record sound that he thought he could do more to make music sound better by designing recording studios than by, uh, than by being a recording engineer day to day himself, which I really liked, you know, it was kind of like, you know, he was telling me about finding his calling, doing this kind of stuff. And he said it was just a realization that he had that he thought he, he thought he understood how to design a room so much better than what the average room was he was seeing. And he really became a name for, for this, you know, he's one of, there are, there are probably five people in the world whose names come up over and over again when you're looking for a rec uh, an acoustician, a recording studio designer, someone to who really understands acoustics, and he's up there, you know, he's, he's in that top five or top ten, whatever. But he's done a ton of places. Uh, he remodeled uh, Jimi Hendrix's studio in New York. Uh, he has a ton of studios in the USA. Uh, let's see where else. Uh, France, Dominican Republic, Spain, Slovenia... Just some of the ones I'm seeing here. I know he has one in Dubai. He has Kazakhstan. Uh, studios all over the world. Lebanon, New Zealand, Scotland, Germany. Uh, the dude has been doing this for a long time. Uh, there is another Wesla Show studio in Colorado. Evergroove out in the mountains in Evergreen. Very nice place run by this dude, Brad, who, uh, who rules. If you're out in the mountains, uh, check out Evergroove. And, uh, yeah, there we are. The ghost house, Denver CO on the list. We made it. We made it fam. So yeah, uh, let's fucking go. Let's do it. We're not going to abuse this tonight, but you are now in. Radio ghost house. 